Disney Illusion Island feels like an introduction to the Metroidvania genre, with a beautiful presentation made perfect for any fans of Disney in its animation history. Developed by Dilala Studios, the minds behind the recent Battletoads reimagining, Illusion Island on paper seems like a beautiful collaboration, and to some extent it is, but as much as I loved its presentation and personality, I found myself looking for more. Our story opens up with our group of heroes receiving an invitation to a picnic. It's where they meet Toku, the leader of the Hojuns who need help finding the Tombs of Knowledge. It's with these books that the Hojuns hope to prevent the Calamity. While I didn't think its writing was amazing, I did think it was humorous and rather self-aware at times, matching the energy and humor of that of the wonderful Mickey Mouse TV show. The cast of Disney personalities really do shine throughout the entirety of this 10-hour story, from its writing, the lovely animated cutscenes, and just the design, Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Goofy truly feel straight out of their respective cartoons. If anything should be taken away from this title, it's how much love and attention was given to this IP, and not so much the story that was behind it. Despite sharing a similar name to the 1990 Castle of Illusion game, Illusion Island isn't a 2D side-scroller but rather a Metroidvania game, and a really accessible one at that. In a similar vein to how Kirby feels like one of the most approachable 2D platformers and now 3D platformers, Illusion Island feels like a Metroidvania with training wheels. For those just getting into the genre or wanting to get a friend into the genre that traditionally hasn't played it, it's a great introduction. At the start of any playthrough, you're able to pick between playing as Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Goofy, with up to four players total. All play alike with very similar abilities, with the only difference being the graphical or the visual that appears alongside the action. There are unlockable abilities that get sprinkled out pretty consistently, like a double jump or the ability to glide, but none of them are combat-centric. Instead, they're all platform-heavy. As a result, you're never really fighting any enemies, but rather just dodging or avoiding them. Throughout Illusion Island's mazes, you'll come across various cartoon foes that'll hurt you with a single touch. The only thing that can really be categorized as a fight or a combat would be a boss encounter where, with platforming, you can hurt or trap the boss with the environment around you. While this makes the game extremely approachable for just about anyone, it also alludes to my biggest issue with Illusion Island, just how shallow it feels progressively over time. The main map is connected and feels like one large playground, but one without identity where Castle of Illusion's worlds all had a distinct theme that felt unique and could be referenced easily in memory, I for the life of me can't tell which part of Illusion Island this is, and I just beat the game this week. There are themes to the world, but they don't feel very distinct, nor do they leave a lasting impression. What's even more annoying is by the time you get fast travel in this game, you've most likely seen a good chunk of it at the end of the game, and so I was left with this feeling of frustration. This would have been a lot more useful earlier in the game, and I wouldn't be as eager to get it if the world felt more cohesive and memorable. There isn't any real combat for gameplay, but it also makes jumping into the game much easier for anyone. Each player has the same moveset, but it also makes it easier to pick which character to play as. Controls for characters are super tight, even despite the floatiness to them, but the game is also very forgiving that I don't think levels really do the controls justice. Throughout the world, you'll come across Glint, which you collect and use to unlock concept art, demo music, and even animation pieces. Mickey's memorabilia also acts as bundles of collectible references to other pieces of Mickey's work. While they don't offer any in-game value, for Disney fans, they're a neat trick. Disney Illusion Island is approachable, beautiful, and good on paper, but it's so shallow in just about every aspect of gameplay, usually for the sake of accessibility, that it feels like it never really reaches its true potential, nor does it feel like the rewards match the time investment. In many aspects, I was waiting for Illusion Island to take the training wheels off so I can fully indulge myself in its great controls and mechanics, but that moment never came. If there's one thing Disney Illusion Island does extremely well is create a beautiful presentation. Disney Illusion Island feels like it's straight out of the most recent Mickey Mouse cartoon series titled The Wonderful World of Mickey Mouse. The humor, the animation style, and the character design match up and look beautiful on the Switch. Specifically with the Nintendo Switch OLED model, colors really pop on the sharp 2D animation. Just like in their prior game Battletoads, the animation work here is fluid. The gameplay, although zoomed out, looks like it could be taken straight from the cartoon, while the actual cutscenes do really look like the cartoon. During gameplay, there's a ton of personality from the subtle animation between characters running and the enemies bouncing around you to the alpha effects in the environment. It's those subtle touches that made each character still feel like themselves even when they were actively speaking. When playing in handheld mode, you can expect a 720p native resolution hitting a 60fps target, while in dock mode that gets bumped up to 1080p resolution also at a 60fps target. The frame rate was consistent and played smoothly throughout my 10 hour playthrough. 
Disney Illusion Island features a beautiful soundtrack composed by David Houston, who previously worked on Battletoads and Thomas Was Alone. The soundtrack is composed of whimsical orchestra pieces that help bring the animated world to life. Grabs with the gameplay aside, the music doesn't hold back one bit. That continues on to the voice talent with many talented Disney voice actors reprising their roles. I sure am glad you sent this map, or I'd never found the place. It ain't on my GPS. Goofy positioning system. Hang on. We all got maps to this island, but we didn't send them to each other? That's so strange. Bill Farmer as Goofy, Brett Iwin as Mickey, Tony Anselmo as Donald, and Kaylin Robrock as Minnie all nail the roles as they obviously would, but to see that level of quality you see in a Disney cartoon translated into a video game never stopped feeling, well, magical. Disney Illusion Island is a great introduction to Metroidvania games for newcomers to the genre, or just fans of Mickey Mouse that perhaps don't actively play video games. It's charming, beautifully presented, and pretty shallow. That shallowness is a double-edged sword. For someone like myself that plays games pretty frequently, I feel like this game never really reached its true potential and lacked depth in its collectibles, gameplay, and world design. To someone that just started playing games or just really loves Mickey Mouse, that makes this much more accessible and easier to play with someone that doesn't play games usually, whether that's a friend, a partner, or perhaps a sibling. And if you have that dynamic, this game will be a lot more fun. But if you're playing this solo and you want a bit more of a challenge, then I don't think this is the game for you.